Hello, all of you beautiful humans. I'm so excited to be here with you today. <clears throat> Thank you so much for rolling with me. That's what we do, right? <laughs> like literally, this, this is perfect for this topic. That's what we do in life and in our business. When things are unexpected or different, we just kind of roll with it and we figure out how to make it work. So thank you guys so much for um, switching over. I'm excited for this topic to be, be recorded. And as I mentioned before, I very much am someone who loves um, interaction. I love questions. I, lo I want to make this as specific to what you guys are walking through right now as possible. So please don't hold back if there's anything specific that you have questions about or that you personally are struggling with, you never know how much your question could help other people who have the same struggles. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Lanier and I have, I love the leaders on your team. Um, they become Candace and Colleen who become super good friends of mine and I, and I absolutely adore them. And I also love how different we are. Like it is so amazing in our community and our network that you can have people that are so like-minded in our mission to really make a difference in the world and really create freedom for our families and how you can still be your own human, like so unique and so different. And I absolutely love that and I adore them. So this topic um is something I was chatting with Candace yesterday of like hey what what could be helpful for your team here are some things I've I've spoken on before and I know some of you have already heard me talk about Shakeology and we're like well I'm pretty sure that most people already have heard that spiel from me um but when I look at what has really served me the most in my business I've been a coach now for four years in March it was four years um, and there, as with everyone, there's been a lot of ups and downs. And um, what has really served me has been how I have learned in life to navigate through the hard times. It's not how I show up when it's easy. It's not how I show up when I'm like at SC20 and like everyone's saying yes. It's not when the sun's shining. It's how I've learned it to shift my perspective and my reaction when life gets really hard. And those are some of the things I, I've kind of done like an analysis of my own, what's my own perspective right now. Um, we personally, I, I had mentioned before when we were on the other call that I feel like right now in the midst of everything going on with the coronavirus and how that is affecting our lives and so many of my friends and so many family and in my own family, there's been completely other things that have been really hard right now that have nothing to do with the virus, that have nothing to do with being on quarantine, other factors that have come into our life that we've been completely blindsided by that have been super hard. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this right now, because I know I'm not alone in that, and I know that you're not alone in that, and I know that several of you probably are kind of feeling the same way, like what? the heck is going on this is insane um so i've got a few questions that i'm going to ask you guys for some self-reflection and um i have a few pointers that i'm going to share with you that i'm hoping will help you walk away from today's coffee chat with some um reinforcements and a newfound perspective on navigating hardship and how it can actually work for us it doesn't have to destroy us right and then please keep those, Megan, I see your question in there. So please keep those questions coming in the, um, in the text box as well. And we will absolutely touch on those. So let me pull up my notes really quick. Okay, so we're going to be kind of going over how to find strength and authenticity in challenging times. One of the things that Candace had mentioned too that you guys have been talking about is like finding who you are finding like how do I stand out how do I find who I am in all of this and um, it is something that's going to kind of be interwoven through this because as I was writing these notes I'm like these are the moments that have helped me clarify who I am and who I want to be more than anything so just a brief background um, on me really quick and how 
my probably hardest times in life have made me the strong individual that I am and um, a, a, I would say con very consistent coach through hard times. Um, I have this huge passion for preventing hardship in other people's lives. And that started when I was young. And some of you have probably heard this, this part of my story, but on my 11th birthday, um, my dad and I were hit by a drunk driver and we were on a motorcycle. He had taken me to softball practice to make a special day that evening. We went out to dinner and our way, on our way home, about seven minutes from home, we were hit head on by a truck. And we were both um, metaflighted to separate trauma hospitals, not expected to make it through the night. I was in a coma and on life support for a week. I required five emergency surgeries to save my left leg. I've got a zipper scar up my thigh. I've got, my shin was completely smashed. Um, and my dad had similar injuries. And um, in coming out of that, you know, so I was in a coma for a week, a few weeks later, or a couple weeks later, they moved me home to a hospital bed. I was stable, but still I had so much metal. I had four metal rods sticking out of my shin and I could not move, like my leg was in traction. So I was elevated because I couldn't, it hurt so bad because of just all the injuries. And I had a, a nurse coming to my bedside twice a day to do dressing changes because I had 48 staples in my femur. And it, this was my new reality, right? I was processing like what had just happened. Thankfully, I've had an incredible family to support me through that. Um, and then everything changed again a few days after I, I got brought home. And my mom had to come home and tell me and my five-year-old brother that our daddy had gone to be with Jesus the night before. And that was a huge, as you can imagine, life altering moment for me. My dad was my hero. He was six foot seven, like a beast of a man. And um, as a little girl, I've, you know, I, I was very, I've been very blessed to grow, to have um, an awesome tight family, um, very wholesome family. And I know not everyone gets that. And that was my reality. And so that was stripped away. And I remember struggling with so much anxiety of, man, like, again, I was 11, so I was dealing with my psychology of a little girl, but I didn't understand, you know, he was getting better, and then all of a sudden he died. Is that going to happen to me too? I was terrified to go to sleep because I thought I just wouldn't wake up because that's how my brain processed what happened to him. Things got a little um, more difficult to process when, you know, we we had kind of made peace in a sense with the fact that he was a beast of a man and never would he want to be a vegetable and live that way his whole life if he had some men, some um, a brain injury. We thought that was what why he died. Then we got the autopsy reports back and we found out that his um, his brain function was totally normal. What actually killed him was he, as he was coming out of his coma, as he was healing, it was 4th of July weekend. And when you're coming out of a coma, you're super agitated. And he, unknowing, <laughs> pulled his feeding tube out. Well, the nurse didn't want to bother the doctor because it was a holiday weekend. And so instead of calling him to surgically place the feeding tube and x-ray it to make sure it went to the right place, she stuck the tube back in to the hole where the feeding tube was and continued the feeding. Well, as any common sense human would know, it's probably not a good idea, right? That's supposed to be placed in a specific place. Well, the feeding went randomly in his abdomen and it caused an infection called peritonitis and they ignored all the signs um, and that was actually what killed him. So as a little girl, as I was grieving, as I was processing through all of this, I, my coping mechanism was I, I only could choose, I had to move forward, right? Life had to keep going and I had to decide who I wanted to be. And um, I was raised in, a, in church and my faith in Jesus has always been like a huge firm foundation of where I get my strength. And I knew that my dad would want me to be the best version of myself moving forward. And I had this reaction, like, I know that if I could help prevent something like this happening to other people. That's what I want to do with my life. That's what I want to do with my career. And at the time I comprehended that as I'm going to be a pediatrician. I want to be a doctor. 
until my pediatrician talked me out of it and said, don't ever become a pediatrician. And I was like, oh, okay, you must not like your job. Um, and that's why I went to nursing school. I thought this is how I can affect change in people's lives. I can be there for them when they're really struggling. Um, and I can hopefully prevent things like this from happening to other people. Because if you think about it, my whole life was completely changed by two 100% preventable acts. The first one was someone getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's 100% a choice, right? 100% preventable. And the second one was the decision that that nurse made. Anyone, everyone would know not to do that. And so prevention has always fueled me. Hardest time in my life as a little girl, it fueled me to do something about it. And I start with that story because it really has like coaching for me is so much more than surface level we're selling Shakeology. It, it like fulfills for me a deep desire to prevent people from dealing with lifestyle disease. What we're doing, you guys, it's making a difference. It, and I know we can't, like we have to be careful when we talk about this stuff, but I have clients that are like, and I'm sure you guys do too, I'm off my blood pressure medication because all of a sudden, you know, I've lost 30 pounds. My doctor said I don't need to take it anymore. Like heart disease is reversing. I've had clients who come to me and say my hemoglobin A1C is so much lower. I don't have to be on diabetes medication anymore. These lifestyle diseases that people are suffering from, we're in the job of prevention. We're preventing people from struggling with some of these preventable things. And for me, I don't take that lightly. Like for me, that is a life calling because of how I can do something about that, right? You can do something about that. And when it comes to people giving me a price objection or when it comes to people like I, this last month, oh my gosh, I got the nastiest stranger messages on Instagram that I've ever gotten before. And I won't lie to you. Like in the beginning, I laughed when I read it. And then I was like, man, you're really a jerk. Like that still doesn't feel good. And I got reported to compliance and I got like, I'm going to reply, I'm going to re um, report you to the FTC. And it was like super, it was hard. But I go back to that, like my fuel for what we're doing and the positive things that we're doing so much stronger than the blips in the road. Because you will, everyone has hard times in this business. Everyone has hard times in every part of their life, in their marriage and as a parent. I also was blindsided by a divorce at 26 years old. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, that pain of rejection was probably harder than losing my dad when I was little. Because, um, you know, without going into the whole story, <coughs> that no one gets married <laughs> thinking this might not work out. Like, usually you're like, this is it forever. And one day my husband came home and was like, I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be married to you. I'm not attracted to you. You've gained some weight since we got married. Like, crazy stuff. And, and I, like, that rejection was super hard to process. And it was in that time of healing that I recognized I have to make a decision again. I have to make a decision. And, and here is probably the most powerful thing that I've learned that I wanted to share with you guys too about when we're in the middle of really hard times, when life blindsides us, right? I think the hardest part about it is that we don't have control. No one chooses the hard times that they're in. No one chooses to be blindsided by things that they never wanted to see coming. No one chooses it. And so sometimes we can feel like we don't, we're not in control and we can't do anything. But through that healing process for myself, I learned that I, we all, myself included, have 100% control over two things. And those two things really helped me say, okay, I can't control what he's doing. I can't control my marriage is falling apart. I can't control that you know, he left. I can't control that I'm in another state and I have no money and no job and I'm not around my family. Can't control any of that. I have, can't control that. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I can always control these two things. And it's my perception of my circumstances. All of us have 100% control over how we view what's happening to us. 
we can see it as something that's happening to us, against us, or for us. How we perceive our situation and our circumstances is in our control. And it's these two things are not easy. It is hard because it forces us to take responsibility. Because if we force to see our hardship as our life is over as we know it, and we force to see this as the worst thing possible that's absolutely going to destroy me and I won't be able to recover from this, that's what we're choosing to believe. You can feel that way. And, and I don't ever want to come across insensitive because there's some hard shit that people are going through really hard stuff and I don't ever want to be insensitive because I've been there and I've I've yelled at God and I've said how how could you let this happen you know I did all the right things how could this happen this is not fair I think all of those are valid feelings and emotions and to let yourself feel those things but at the same time at some point we have to say I choose to see if this is going to destroy me or if day by day I'm going to crawl through it and that brings me to the second point that we have control over, and that's our reaction to it. And this is where I have taught a lot of people, uh, whether they're clients of mine or coaches of mine, that I decided and I, I realized that I have, to dis I have to choose whether I'm going to be a victim of my circumstance or if I'm going to overcome it. And, and that objectively it is, that is what it is. We choose to be a victim of our circumstances and defined by it, or we choose to, to figure out how to overcome it and let it make us into a better person. And when I was going through my divorce, I remember thinking like, man, am I unlovable? Was this my fault? Am I really not attractive? And then there was like that red flag, like don't even go there. Don't go there. That's a choice. If I choose that I'm going to choose to believe that everything that he told me was true and be that and crawl into a hole and numb myself with alcohol and don't get me wrong, I had plenty of nights of wine where I polished off a bottle by myself. But I, I choose, I chose, I have to choose every day sometimes. Today, am I going to be a victim of what happens to me or am I going to overcome it? Am I going to learn how to navigate it? Just like, like, a, like a super basic example, but the Zoom call, what did we do? We could have said, oh, so this sucks and won't work. Bye. I don't want to talk to you. No, of course. Like we chose to shift. Let's shift. Let's pivot. What we planned on doing didn't work. And so let's do something different. And then we figured it out. And here we are together. And that's like, obviously this is a Zoom call and no one's, there's no pain in it. But really that concept of, of recognizing in every hard area of your life, how can, I, how can I choose to see this differently? And how can I choose to react to it differently? Because I wanna make this hardship, this hard challenge, I'm going to dictate where it goes next. And that's where in our personal development, like I love Trent Shelton so much because he talks about that. Your pain can be your prison or your platform. And it's true. Think about, <coughs> think about people who are super inspiring as motivational speakers. Have you ever heard someone be a powerful influencer on a stage and say, my life was super easy. It was never hard. I didn't really have to try that hard. Everything was given to me. Everything went exactly as I planned. Of course not, right? The most influential, the most powerful people, they almost died or they had something super hard happen to them. Brendan Burchard's a perfect example of that. Like I, and I got to go to the high performance experience with Candace and Colleen and like his story, I've heard it a million times, but it's so powerful. Like this was a shifting point for him. He went from covered in bills and debt and wanting to commit suicide to look at what he's done and shifting millions of lives across the planet because of he chose to let his, his life altering moment where he almost lost his life or after his breakup when he was suicidal, he chose what to do with that story. He chose 
not to be a victim of it. He chose to overcome it and then he made it his freaking mission to share that message and share that type of reaction with as many people as possible. Because when you choose to overcome your situation as an influencer, as someone who can step out in a platform that Beachbody gives us, all of a sudden you're paving the way for other people. There are so many people right now, you guys, that are hurting and are so lonely. And it scares me and it's so sad how much I know that our anxiety and depression and suicide rate is gonna go through the roof because of the isolation. And what if you can be the person that says, you know what, you guys, I've been struggling too. I'm, I'll be honest with you, I've been struggling too. Life's been really hard right now. I don't need to share all the, detail, <coughs> all the details. But let me tell you that even though life has been hard, this is what I'm doing about it. And you don't have to know all the things. You don't have to be perfect, but like show how you can see this differently, right? Because I lost my dad when I was young, because I was hit by a drunk driver, I've spoken to thousands of kids at high, in high schools since it happened, and I've been able to tell them, hey, I've lived through this. I've been there. These are the consequences. Let me share my story with you in hopes that this becomes real for you so that you can make a different choice with your life before it's too late. I've gotten the chance to, the drunk driver that hit us had nine other DUIs in um nine other times had his license taken away in other states and he had like several other DUIs he had just com completed um, an AA meeting that day and he had the the slip on his truck passenger seat said I will abstain from any alcohol and at, he got 15 years to life he was charged with second degree murder first person in California to, for that ever to happen to because of his history and I got to go to go to his parole board hearing because he had failed three times and I got to go to, it was, I think, three years ago. I got to go to one. And I got to see him face to face for the first time since I was 11. And um, I, the opportunity to tell him, hey, I forgive you. Because again, and I think I wasn't going to, this, was, this is like side note, but with hardship usually comes anger, resentment, bitterness. It doesn't serve you and it never will. And I had to make a choice again, this man, am I going to choose to hate him and be bitter? Because that's not going to affect him. We all know this. It doesn't change the person at all. It changes your heart. And I did not want that to be me. And so I got to tell him, hey, I'm praying for you. You can still turn your life around. I completely forgive you. And at this point, He's an old, I don't, I don't remember, it's like in his 60s, but he's been an alcoholic. And so he's like 92, he looks what he looks like. And I got, and I got to, to say that to his face. Again, I got to choose my reaction and then choosing that reaction and choosing that perception. And I got to tell him because his recollection of the night of our accident was very different. And he still to this day, 20 years later, blames it on his girlfriend and the fight they had that night blames it on the fact that his dad was an abusive alcoholic. And I got to tell him, hey, I chose to not let you dictate how my life was gonna go. I chose that I wasn't gonna let your, your actions that killed my dad, I wasn't going to be a victim and perpetuate that chain. I chose that, you can still choose it too. Because when you, now I'm talking to you guys, when you guys choose that, you get to tell other people, this is an option. I know life is hard, but this is an option that you get to choose to make something out of it, right? You don't have to be the victim of it. You don't have to perpetuate the bad decisions. You don't have to blame other people. You don't, you own your life. You get to choose that in the midst of life being super shitty and super hard, that you're still going to find a way to find the sunshine. You're going to find a way to make a bigger impact. You're going to find a way to encourage more people. And again, because of that, because that's how I've chosen to react in life, because that's how I chose to react to my divorce, because when I had a miscarriage and I talked, and while, when I was a coach, I had a miscarriage between my first two boys. I shared that pain and I shared how I was processing it. I had, I can't like countless 
people reach out to me, hey, I've, I'm really struggling because I'm going through a miscarriage too. Hey, I had a miscarriage too, and I've never talked to anybody about it. And I'm feeling super alone because no one understands me. And all of a sudden, your hardship becomes something that's so powerful. That because you walked it, you get to relate to and connect with people in their hardest times more than anyone else. And it becomes a superpower. And I'm not saying, again, that any of us would choose these things. We wouldn't choose them. But a lot of times, all the time, we never choose them. But if they're going to happen, why don't we make something of it, right? Why don't we choose to like, okay, how can I help as many freaking people as possible? Because this is hard. And then you'll find what happens in that process of sharing it is that you're, it ends up helping your healing process. It really does, at least for me. I can only speak for myself. Every time that I'm able to share any piece of my story and connect with someone and for someone to say thank you for listening to me or thank you so much for showing me that I don't have to go through this alone or thank you so much for showing me that I can, you know, I can still move on. I'll be okay after being blindsided by a divorce. I'll be okay after losing a close, a loved one. I'll be okay after my miscarriage. I'll be okay. Thanks for showing me that I'll be okay. All of a sudden, that's like validation for me. You know what I mean? And, I don't, and I'm sure you guys can relate to that. I'm sure that you've had something along those lines that you can relate to. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, all that to be said, I have a couple questions that I want to I wanna ask you guys. Number one, who do you want to be as the best version of yourself when life gets really, really hard? Who, who, what kind of person do you want to be? How do you want to react? And it's easier to ask yourself this question when you're not in it, right? <laughs> Way easier. <laughs> when you're not in the thick of it, what kind of person do you want to be? And think about the people that you admire most in your life, even it, whether they're, you know, authors of your favorite personal development book or podcast people or close people to you. How do you want to be? How do you want to react? Who do you want to be? What do you want people to see you as? If you're a parent, how do you want your kids to see you react when life gets really, really hard? So there's kind of like two sides of this. Who do you admire? And then who's admiring you? Who do you look up to? Who do you want to model your life after certain traits? What are those traits? Why do you appreciate them? And then who's looking up to you? Because everyone, whether or not you're a parent, everyone has a circle of influence. And who, how do you want to show those people in real life, this is what, this is, this is how I want to, to show you, like, you, this is how you navigate hardship. I want to be Luna. Yeah, who doesn't? It's awesome. And this is something that you guys can keep thinking about. Be present, mindful, and forgiving. To be joy and joyless situations. Absolutely. Someone who can still show up and inspire people to overcome hardships. Light in the darkness. Absolutely. Stronger and not shut down. I love it. Awesome. I love this, you guys. And write these things down or write the question down and really think about this and maybe ask your teams this or, you know, it's something to ask if you have older kids, ask your spouse. It's a good question, reflection question. <clears throat> okay, and number two, it's a little bit different, but kind of similar. And this is very applicable in our business right now. But when something isn't working, when you hit a roadblock, when, you, when reaching goals is much harder than you thought they'd be, um, or when you have a problem in front of you, what's your initial reaction? As a person, whether that's in your business, whether that's in your relationships, whether that's in any area of life, when you, when you hit a roadblock or you're like, hey, I'm going to go diamond in 30 days in your business, right? 
I'm gonna go diamond in 30 days. And then at 28 days, you have one person signed up. Uh, what's your reaction? What do you do? Take a step back, see how I can improve, find another way of entry, love it. Some of the things to think about is, are you naturally a solutions oriented person? So something that my hardships, the things that I've been through have taught me, again, it's the same thing that we've been talking about. I realize that when, when a problem is in front of me, I choose how I see it, I choose how I react to it. I choose to let, let it stop me, I choose to quit, or I choose to keep going. I choose to pivot, I use that word a lot on my team, and I'm a very fast pivoter. When something's not working how I want to, I change things very fast. And it's something that's always served me and worked well for me in my business. It's not easy to follow <laughs> for my team because I, I can change things very fast. Um, but it really has served me because I notice I have control. I have control. I'm going to show my daughter, no matter how hard it gets, just keep trying and things will work out. Never give up. I love it. I get doubtful that I remember I can do anything. Absolutely, Kiana. Ooh, I love that. What language is that? Italian? Yeah, it's German. I have no idea. I'm not good with languages. I will either find a way, oh, Latin. I will find a way or make one. I love that. Like, that's totally another tattoo idea. I love it. Okay. And then the third question that I want to ask you guys is, if you're honest with yourself, do you see your, strug your struggles and your hardships as a weakness or a strength to you as an individual and in your business? For sure, strength. It's so interesting because if you're someone that that is ashamed of like, man, I'm really struggling and I'm ashamed. That's a very common thing that I see a lot. Um, and it's, I think it's a very common human reaction. We want to hide our imperfections from everyone, especially on social media, right? <clears throat> I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. I don't want people to know. For me, one of my personal things I've had to really work through is I don't want to ever be a burden. And I've, I'm the, I have a younger brother, and my, you know, my mom was only 33 when my dad died, which is that's how old, like that's how old I'm turning. So it's very bizarre to me to think back of how young she was. And I've always my personality is always to be the strong one for everybody. And so something I personally have had to work through is that me reaching out for help it's, it's not a burden it's not a burden and i don't know if any of you have struggled with that but that's where i'm very transparent in what i go through and um in my hardships but that's that's been a huge thing that i've con i constantly still have to work through and sharing with my husband hey i really need help today because the kids are driving me crazy i have a two and a four year old and i'm 25 weeks pregnant if i, I for those of you who don't know so like asking for help I'm struggling, but every time I do, people are like, oh, so you are human. And I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm doing things that they can't do, right? So there's always power in that authenticity. Um, and then we see so much strength in other people's weaknesses and them sharing them. Like, it's so brave. You guys, like when I know when we're, we're at a conference or something and we see someone on stage sharing, like, um, Lewis House. You guys know who I'm talking about? Um, he, I remember I saw him at a Brendan Burchard event and he um, shared about being sexually molested as a kid. And it had been, it, it was very fresh for him that he actually came out and shared that. And not one person would ever say, how cowardly of you to share that right? Like not one person because of how he shared his story. And he's like, Hey, I have a, he's insanely successful, by the way, if you don't know who he is, he has an incredible podcast. Um, that's so brave of you to come out and say like, this is what I struggled with. And I held on to, this is how I broke it to my family just five years ago as an adult man. And it's, 
we look at people who do those things as this so courageous, but when it comes to us sharing our hardships, how many times do we cower and we're like, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody, nobody wants to hear what I'm going through. I don't like, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I don't want people to think that I'm um, throwing a pity party. These are just some of the things I've heard of. I don't want people, I don't know what are people going to think if they hear that this is my reality, that this is, oh, now I'm ashamed. You know what? Yeah, totally sweaty and nervous. But if we can look at our challenges and our hardships as our strength, that is a strength of ours. It is not our weakness. Even if it's something that's making us feel defeated, maybe in the moment, or making it's a struggle, it is a freaking powerhouse strength of yours. That is how you can start to find more of who you are and how you stand out because we all know this, it's your story. Some people have a hard time identifying what their story is and start looking at the defining moments in your life that have been hard. Start looking at things you've seen or when did you decide that you wanted to be who you are today? Why, who are you serving as a coach? Why is it important to you? Is it just for a commission check? Is it just for a shiny bonus? Or is it because you have a calling and you know that you actually really could change people's lives, right? Your story, your struggle, your hardship is your freaking strength. And so act like it. And I know it's so difficult <laughs> to do a live video or be honest and get vulnerable. But at the end of the day, you have to go back to why are you showing up? And at the end of your life, do you want to have regrets or do you want to say I lived fully and I gave my full heart and I was transparent and this is my story and I am unashamed because I know that I have people to help. It is not, it is not by chance and by accident that you're on this team and that you're on this call and that you are a coach. Not by accident. There's meaning here, you know, and I know so many of you in this group of incredible women, there's so much power in what you guys have to share. And we have a platform. That's what I love about Beachbody. It's not the name Beachbody. <laughs> it's the platform that it gives us. It's the, it's the power that we can have in people's lives to share, share our story and what, what really matters to us. Okay, so in, in ending here, I'm going to definitely go back to your guys' questions. Um, I just want to share, identify a couple of things, and then I'm going to give you guys some homework. But how I was thinking, like, how have, have my hardships helped, helped prepare me to be a successful coach and, an, and a fulfilled human, I guess I would say. And again, this is not me saying that I'm perfect by any means because I so am not. I struggle on the daily. But I've realized that because I went through these things and because I've been able to step through them and get on the other side and recognize the power in the story, I found purpose in my hardships. I found purpose through being knocked on my ass. And it ignites that passion within me that all these little fears – fear of saying something wrong in a live video, fear of what people will think, fear of getting nasty comments. They don't matter as much as the fire that I have and the fear of what if I don't. The fear of the people that won't hear my message if I don't show up. I have people in my life that are counting on me that I don't even know that they're listening. I... <coughs> um have so much purpose because of what I've been through. Number two, I can relate to other people. And that's a huge part of being a coach, just being able to relate to them. Whether you're a busy mom, whether you're struggling with infertility, whether you're struggling with feeling alone, whether whatever your, your story is, that creates relationships and re vulnerability, relatability to people who are in your same shoes. Because I promise you, Brendan Burchard says this the best way, and I will never remember the number, right? But he said something like, there's been 9 billion people on the planet. I promise you, you are not the only one to walk your road. <laughs> so many times we feel alone, or we hear people say, like, you just don't understand. 
I promise you, you're not the only person that's been through it. What you're going through, there's been people that have survived and have been through it. And if they could do it, you can do it, right? Um, I know how to fight when things get hard because I've had to in order to survive. I'm confident in the kind of person that I want to be because I've gotten clarity of what matters to me and what's important. The little stuff, it doesn't matter anymore. And I, I grew up really fast as a preteen, you know, so the little stuff didn't matter anymore because I recognize life is bigger. I almost died. So I'm not going to care if Gwenda is spreading rumors, right? I'm not going to care what they might think because, man, I... I know what is important in life. And then um, two more. Hard is relative. What someone, I just had someone text me. <laughs> I had a, a coach text me that signed up for a discount yesterday. And um, then she texted me today. I was like, hey, did so-and-so sign up through you? I've been talking to her for a couple of days. It's really a bummer she didn't sign up through me. And I'm like, I've been talking to this person for two years. And like, I, <laughs> you're going to be okay. I promise you, you know, and if that stops her, that her heart is that, that is to her, that's that to me, that's nothing, right? Heart is relative. It's all in your perspective. And then lastly, it's made me a super, it's made me a solutions oriented human to the point where it gets super annoying, especially for my husband. Like if he has a bad day and he comes home and he's telling me about like stuff that's my husband's in law enforcement and a specialized unit in investigations with uh, narcotics and gangs. And so he has a very intense job. And if he comes, when he comes home, I'm trying to get much better at just listening and not giving advice. Like, I'm really sorry that you had a really shitty day. Here's a beer. <laughs> Sometimes that's all people want, right? They don't want the solutions. They don't want that. But my brain is so hardwired now that if I see a problem, I have to fix it. If I see a problem in my business, if I see a problem in my marriage, if I see a problem, like I, I will not hesitate anymore. We will figure out a, pro a solution for this. We're going to figure out a way to twist this. Okay, so I have some homework for you guys. Has anyone seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Oh, I'm so happy that most of you haven't. Okay, I want you to go watch it and um, pay attention to Desmond Doss. He, I, I watched this movie for the first time, I think a year ago, and I started a hashtag, be a boss like Doss, and it didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> um, but his story, when we're talking about life being hard, when we're talking about something deep inside of you that fuels you, holy crap is this like this guy makes us like his work his heart and work ethic strength is insane so um to kind of preface who he is it he he saved 75 i had to write this down because i knew i wouldn't remember in the battle of okinawa he saved 75 men and he refused to carry a firearm in in war he refused, He's, he was called a conscientious objector, and he was like, I don't take lives, but I'll save them. So I'll be a medic. And you have to watch the movie to see the context of what he had to do to save these 75 men that were just gonna get left for dead. And it's such an incredible movie. So I highly recommend you watching it. Maybe you guys can do like a, I don't know, post thread on your team of like what your takeaways were. Because it will freak you, I hope, that it fires you up. And all of a sudden, all the struggles that you guys are going through right now, and I'm not belittling them at all, all of a sudden, I, I would hope that you can see how maybe they could start to work for you instead of against you. And I'm not, again, I'm not belittling them or making them insensitive. But so much of this is about perspective. You guys are a freaking powerhouse team with so much heart and so much emotion. I see, I get to be in your team page, so I see the SC board. I see all the work that you guys are doing and you're showing up when life is super hard. And that's what, that's what separates the people who are quitters from the people who are insanely successful. Not just financially, not just as a coach, but like in their impact in the world, right? Um, okay, yeah, Hacksaw Ridge. Let me go back really quick and make sure I know at the beginning you guys had a couple questions. 
What would you say to someone who just lost their job a couple minutes ago and get her motivated to work this amazing opportunity? I don't want to say names. Okay. So as far as, so here's the thing that we have to be, we have to be sensitive to where people are at. 100%. Some people are, are genuinely not going to have money because they got laid off and they're in, a, they're in the processing of emotions. So absolutely, if this person is a coach already, this is a job. Um, I've always called coaching a career, and I treat it like one. And so maybe, Megan, for you, how can you show up as a business owner in a way to where not only she can see and be encouraged by it, but other people can and know that this is what it means to be a business owner. This is my career. This is what I'm making of it. This is how I'm showing up. This is my schedule. These are my events planned for the next month, two months, quarter. This is how I'm helping people in financial hardship. This is how you make your first $500 as a coach. Those kinds of things. When I started asking myself those kinds of things and putting those resources out there, it really shifted my business because I wasn't treating this as like a hobby it really was my career. And if I went to my nursing job and I didn't have my work agenda and I didn't show up and I didn't answer emails and I didn't have my meetings and show up for those eight to 16 hours, I would have gotten fired. And we just don't have that necessity in this job. And so the best way to get people on board with the business is to be a business owner and show up like a business owner and set that example, in my opinion. Okay. Um, my son just turned nine months today and I feel like I finally am getting my mojo back woohoo! and really diving into putting my whole self forward for my team and offering this business opportunity. But I would love to hear some tips on how to navigate a crying baby and get real productive focus. <laughs> um, okay. So I can hundred percent relate. Um, if you guys ever go to my YouTube channel, you'll see 75% of my videos. I'm either nursing or I have my kids crawling on me or they're yelling in the background or they're fighting on the couch. Sometimes my two-year-old, like he's in the stage where he just gets naked all the time. And I'm like covering like as he's running by with my hands, like I don't wanna get in trouble having naked babies on YouTube. Um, and here's the beauty of it, right? So that can be perceived as a hardship because it is, it is hard. <laughs> like having kids at home and working at home, it is hard, it is very hard, but just like we learned, it can, it's also an asset because I can't tell you how many already working coaches or new people have messaged me and said, hey, I saw your YouTube channel and because I saw your kids going crazy and crawling all over you, I realized I could coach too. All of a sudden, you're relatable. And because you're showing up and showing like, this is my real life, it's batshit crazy, but I look at this sweet little face and I'm like, I've got to change the world for you. And all of a sudden I am like during nap time hustle, I'm doing power hours. Um, I, I do think it's important. This is a weakness of mine. I'll hundred percent admit it's important to have boundaries. So making sure that you have intentional family time and then intentional work time. If you do have someone to help you with kids, for like an hour a day, whether that's a spouse or a parent. <laughs> I know it's really hard right now because we're all limited to help right now, <clears throat> but that's super helpful. Um, I started my business because I was working for the first two years, I worked full time in prison for 40 to 60 hours a week with a baby at home. And so I had to wake up at four. That was the only way I could do it. I woke up at four, did my workout, did a post, nursed my son, got ready and went to work. And then I, any kind of po tiny pockets I had, if you're able to pee by yourself in the bathroom, like you could send out some invites <laughs> when you're peeing. I know that that sounds crazy, but um, it's just like getting creative. And then you just share that with other moms because guarantee there's other moms in that situation and you figure out what works for you. And then you just share that with people. This worked for me. Maybe it'd work for you too. <coughs> Okay, let's see. I want to make sure that I didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. Didn't miss anything. Um, blah, 
please. Sorry, guys. I'm just making sure that I didn't miss anything, and then I'll let you go. Okay. Any any other questions, guys? Feel free to unmute yourself. Was this helpful at all? Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm um, okay. Good. You guys can reach out to me at any time. I think you guys are amazing. Love your team. Love what you're about. I love that I got to spend an hour with you this morning. Um, I will get this recording uploaded to YouTube and then post it in Colleen's team page. And then if one of you could just share it in the Rising Lotus or I'll send it to Candice and then she can share it with you guys too. But you guys are amazing. Bye.